So next, um, we are going to talk about next steps, building an ecosystem. We're going to make this a fairly sort of hard-hitting, uh, fast-moving section. I'm going to begin with a video clip. This is with um, Eric Roussel, who is the CEO of Open Badge Factory, our Finnish partner, um, uh, who produced not only Open Badge Factory, but also the uh, Open Badge Passport uh, open source code that underlies the eCampus Ontario Open Badge passport. And Eric has some interesting insights into the notion of ecosystems and networks. So I'm just going to bring up that video. eCampus Ontario has the eCampus Ontario passport. What should be their ambition, do you think? For, for using this. Can you provide some elements that, that they, of uh, things they might want to accomplish by having their own passport for Ontario based in the post-secondary sector? If you are thinking uh, badges uh, on the base of open recognition, uh, uh, eCampus Ontario, it's a, it's a, it's a network. Uh, I think that we are very quickly speaking in terms of ecosystem. So uh, I think that the, the passport is basically the place where um, this different kind of organization can, can meet. With, uh, it's a place where you can see an active community at the point. So uh, having a network of organization issuing badges uh, will not have a real impact, in my opinion, on the, on the area of the region. I don't know how you call it in English. Uh, without that you have a place where you can see what is happening there, what kind of collaboration there is, what kind of endorsement there is between different kind of organizations, um, uh, uh, sharing uh, the badge between organizations and, and building, I would say, uh, this ecosystem. So, uh, in my opinion, Passport as an open space, as an open uh, platform, uh, show you an active community and uh, bring the ecosystem idea as a new level because ecosystem should not be thought uh, only as uh, with the ecosystem between organizations creating badges and issuing badges but the ecosystem is, all, is also uh, ecosystem with uh, the, the badge earners which will in one way show uh, the badge that they have got um, and, and of course all the other stakeholders and all, all other actors which will uh, basically connect to uh, the passport, to the community. So in, the, in an ecosystem like this, uh, badges can come from many places, not just Cancred Factory, not just Open Badge Factory. They can be accepted if they're legal open badges and, and recognized and, and I guess be given new life uh, within a passport, um, within an eCampus Ontario passport. So in a, in a scenario like that, you might have, say, an employer who says, um, we want these skills, um, we like these badges that say they demonstrate these skills, so therefore there's a relationship there. They've said uh, they like those badges that are perhaps issued by this post-secondary institution, so if individual earners come with those badges, that is already a connection with, with the employer, for example, yes? Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. And then the, the next step in the, in the development of the passport, it's very important to, to see, I would say, different steps in the, in the development. The first step has been basically to get easily badges for me in my backpack, in my personal uh, backpack. Second step has been to be able to share it with my with the community, with my with my peers and with my with my colleagues. So it's a, a gallery, we call it a gallery. Uh, the third stage has been to to go further on uh, on basically bringing more value uh, uh, at the social level or bringing more uh, value on the badge. So uh, endorsements inside the passport. Uh, possibility to, to bring more evidences, uh, to enrich your, your, your badge and your connections. 
And now we are going uh, in a direction where we're bringing new, uh, more powerful ways to basically look for, find people with some competencies. So now employers are coming in the passport. We are designing, I would say, new kind of accounts for organizations. Organizations will be able to, to, uh, to become members of the passport to basically find uh, competent people there, but also they will also be able to endorse them, to follow them, and so on. So basically what we're talking about here is something more than getting a badge and putting it on LinkedIn. Powerful platform, it's great that it's out there, but we think there are ways of networking with badges before you send them out to social media. Networking with them on the passport or backpack, call it what you will. Currently um, what we're proposing today is the eCampus Ontario uh, passport as a place, a hub, to share these things and leverage the value of the badges after they've been issued. So uh, this is just an overview of the infrastructure, CanCred factory uh, and the passport, that it's a bicameral structure. You issue badges on the left through various means um, and uh, that, that can be direct or through a, a learning management system. You issue them, they land in the passport, you can start sharing them from there and that's uh, over the next year, year and a half, that's where most of the value is going to be built, is leveraging, valorizing these badges, if I can use a French word, after issue, um, and, and making them useful for people's lives. So uh, eCampus Ontario has a head start on this. It has a, a growing number of institutions. Most recently, we've been joined by UOIT. I'd leave a blank there because we're in discussions with a few others at the moment. Uh, and they have the dedicated passport using that open source technology hosted in Ontario that can be a place to leverage value um, out of the badges after they've been issued from all those sources. So um, just a quick um, few slides about how the CanCred system supports the Ontario community. For one thing, we, we have bilingual platforms. We're about to release a bilingual website, so we're very much focused on the, uh, the bilingual fact in Canada. Um, we also, and I was sharing this slide with other people, we have ways of sharing the issue of badges. So one organization can make a badge and share it, for example, as a link so retaining control of it, and but delegating the issue of the badge to other organizations, approved organizations. And uh, there's another mo uh, model to that is where they can allow other people to fork the badge. And the fork can be as simple as changing, just simply changing the image of the badge, or you can say you can change the metadata, whatever, depending on your trust between the organization. The whole notion is building a trust-based ecosystem between organizations that's, that's organic and can build over time like an ecosystem. So these badges can change over time. Um, the other element here is endorsement. So we've been talking about brand and how that helps the credibility of your badge with an, with an employer, but you can add credibility by endorsing badges and the CanCred system is an early adopter of endorsement, which is part of the Open Badges 2.0 specification. So if you get these organizations saying that a badge, and include the employer, saying that a badge is interesting to them, saying that it's quality and it meets their quality standard or that it's simply useful, um, then you have added value to the badge. And beyond that, you can simply endorse the issuer. So any badges they issue are de facto, these are decent badges until I say, until I don't say, uh, until I withdraw that. Um, and what's coming that Eric hinted at is endorsement after issue. So endorsement once they're in the passport uh, for specific purposes. And each endorsement carries its own story. I endorse this because, okay? Um, so those are the those are the three ways that uh, that we support it. So I'll pass over to Michelle to uh, speak about um, infrastructure. Um, right there, yeah. 
guys. You guys can hear me? Oh, yeah, obviously. Uh, so I'm Michelle Singh. I'm a Chief Technology Officer at eCampus Ontario, and I want to talk to you guys a little bit of, about infrastructure. But before doing that, I want to say uh, hi to my francophone friends. Est-ce qu'on a des francophones à la pièce? Je sais qu'on en a quelques-uns. Oui, bonjour à vous. Um, so yeah, I want to talk to you a little bit about infrastructure in terms of badging and kind of opening up the discussion to a larger set of ideas. Um, as you guys know, uh, eCampus, we like open. Right? We like open in every sense of open, be it open resources, open standards. We really like that. And we, we also like new stuff, and we also like to look at old stuff in new ways. Right? And um, when I think about badges, and, and we've been talking about badges all, all day here, but we've been really focusing on the top of the T of the T-shaped student, right? Co-curricular records, how to recognize learning out of the classroom, and stuff like that. But at eCampus, we're also interested in the whole picture, right? Not only the top of the T, but also the stem of the T. Right? What's happening in classrooms? What about digital credentials? What about the transcript? How will the transcript evolve with time, right? So, I graduated from university in 1996. I got a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old, and I'm thinking, my transcript in 1996 may resemble very much a transcript my children will have in 15 years if we don't change stuff, right? if we don't evolve the discussion and use technology to support learners. So that's kind of our mindset at eCampus. We're not only thinking about badges. Badges is a very important part of the discussion, but I think there's another level to that discussion as well. So I just wanted to quickly, with you guys, kind of give you a little bit of insight in our thought and say that when we're thinking of infrastructure, we're, we're really maximizing openness and standards. And IMS Global, Mark Sermon, uh, quickly chatted about the fact that a number of years ago, Mozilla <clears throat> gave the open badge standard to IMS Global. And IMS Global, a lot of you guys know about IMS Global because they do a lot of good work in terms of open standards and enabling systems to talk to each other in the educational space. But they have a set of standards that we can leverage to kind of improve uh, what we're doing right now. So these are a couple of the standards that can play together, play nice together, in terms of creating this digital transcript. So Open Badges 2.0, we talked about it. Don was talking about endorsements stuff like that, that comes alive with the second standard, the second version of the open badges. But there's one roster, there's CASE, which is, which is kind of newish, but is trying to create standards around competencies and, and learning objectives or learning goals, learning tools interoperability. A lot, of you, a lot of people are already using this with LMSs. Badge Connect API to facilitate the transfer of badges through, throughout different systems. And one thing that we're really compelled of, of, of exploring is this notion of the co comprehensive learning record. A learning record that would host everything, badges, uh, grades, everything within one environment that has or enables student agency. Students could interact with them, with the, uh, the, the CLR, could share it, do stuff like that. So that's kind of where we are in terms of using these standards. Um, the idea of the comprehensive learning record is to expose everything that's tied to learning around a learner and make it visible. And I was having these discussions and thinking today about the skills gap and the fact that employers don't necessarily have access to the skills they're looking for. And, and I remember having this, so I was a faculty member for a number of years and I remember talking with employers and I was from IT and I remember employers saying, well, Michelle, what we want for a graduate is like a programmer that can also take care of my database and do my cybersecurity risk assessments, right? Like, it's, it's impossible, right? It's impossible. And when you think about it, and I'm, I'll just go, go back to my children here, right? Probably saying just another guy talking about his children on stage, but I mean, when I talk to my children, so I'll give you an analogy or a story. I'll ask Laurence and Marianne, hey, uh, girls, what would you like for Christmas? Right? So if I say this to my girls, and I already said this to my girl, I remember my girls told me, Michelle, what we'd, we'd like is like a Disney cruise boat, right? Like, we'd like the Disney cruise boat. So I said, okay, you guys want to go on a trip on the Disney cruise boat? No, 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 they said, no, no, we don't want a trip. We want the actual boat, right? They said, that's impossible. And I said, well, let's look at options. And I showed them options. And they said, well, okay, well, finally, we just want, like, the doll, right? So 
The idea here is if we expose possibilities to employers, I think the mindset will change. They might see and say, okay, this is more reasonable. I can see what these students know. So instead of asking for this impossible thing, they can see and choose, all right? So the idea for us is to expose this, find ways to expose this. The challenge is working with registrars, right? Working with institutions, how can we do this? So I know there are registrars here today. So it's, if I was listening to you guys speak about challenges earlier, well, that's kind of our challenge. How can we do this? Can we work with registrars as eCampus Ontario and help move the needle forward? Quickly, I don't want to go into a big tech discussion with you guys, but this is, this is kind of what's possible, right? So having an LMS, assessment tools, LTI integrations, this comprehensive learning record badges system that can host everything, case competency statements that are regulated by government, for example, the credential re registry, there's a lot of work being done for, by, by credential engines right now in the US in terms of hosting credentials and being transparent about credentials. And then having this comprehensive learning record that sits there that students have access to and that students can publish and share with whomever they want. That, that exposes all these pieces of learning. So the top of the T plus the stem of the T, kind of having that full view of what's going on. So that's where we are. That's our train of thought, uh, looking to engage with anybody that's interested in the discussion so that we can do some good work together. Thanks. So I think we're wrapping, and uh, I want to go back to something Daniel said at the beginning, and that is uh, moving forward, how do we get started and where are the best places to go? And what's really interesting to me in the Canadian context is that we have no national competency framework. Um, and we kind of reinvent this stuff over and over again. Uh, last year, uh, the Canada West Foundation published a wonderful document called Matchup which is a schema for thinking about how competencies work across multiple professions and occupations. It's a very easy read and a very clear document about how to think about this stuff. And if we have to start somewhere, we really need to take uh, some advice from Mark this morning, which was find the top three professions that industry thinks there's a skill shortage in and go after those with a badging and credential, micro-credential system. It's that kind of stuff. It's the kind of approach that uh, Debbie's taking at Durham or Teresa's taking at Humber. It's like getting real in a specific area and really getting down to the level of a competency framework against which an authenticated, rigorous badging system can be applied. And that's what gets us towards that alternative digital credentialing model that I talked about first thing this morning. So it has to be built and recognized by the community. And the community includes the academic institutions and employers and students. What Chris talked about this morning is giving our students a stake in how we design these systems because ultimately we're designing it for them and we need their input into that process. As we move forward, we will be having Open Badge Forum 2020, I'm sure, and it will advance the process further. But before we do that, we want to begin to build an active community of practice in Ontario so I need you to write down this URL. This is the URL we would like you to use to register your interest with us so that we can follow up with you regularly and make you aware of opportunities that we want to expose you to over the next uh, fiscal year. So we invite you to become a part of the open community in Ontario beyond open education, beyond open source, but into open recognition. So please join us and become a part of that network. We would like to thank you for your active participation today. This has been great. We have had great turnout the past two years for this event, and it's only through the seeing the examples, models of practice, 
incomplete as some of them are, formative, that we actually move forward, that we get good at what we do. Everything we do at eCampus Ontario is based on design-based thinking. And we take a design-based research approach to what we do too, realizing that we'll likely not get it right the first time, and incremental improvement is what gets us to an optimal state that works for most. So thanks very much. Safe travels back, right down that URL. Take care. <laughs>